Hey guys, Michelle with Levis here. I am so excited today. Welcome to Cooking with Shelly. Um, that is the nickname that everybody calls me, Shelly. So uh, maybe in future videos you're going to see me with a little apron that I ordered with my nickname, Shelly. Sorry, my puggies are barking in the background. As soon as they hear me talking, they think it's all about them, right? Who knows? We're babies. Anyway, I'm super excited because my director sent me this super cool recipe card. So I thought that I would try making the recipe and it's called chicken and bacon sliders. Who doesn't love chicken and bacon, right? So come on, let's cook, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm gonna get some of this delicious thick cut peppered bacon. Sorry, Megan, I'm putting a spin on the recipe. I love, the, I love taking recipes and making them my own. So if you guys have a recipe out there, don't be afraid to try your own twist on it. So this recipe, if you're gonna follow me, calls for two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which I have here, some water, some salt and pepper, eight ounces of cream cheese softened, so I have some that I've had sitting on my counter, a tablespoon of garlic powder, but y'all know I'm gonna use my garlic lover seasoning that I love so much, four bacon strips cooked and crumbled, and one tablespoon of fresh herbs. You can use dill, rosemary, or thyme. I happen to have some dill in my fridge, so that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, um, even though this recipe just calls to cook up your bacon in the pan, if you have not yet had the privilege of purchasing your Micro Pro Grill and you want one, message me. Let's do a party. Let's earn you this bad boy free, because I can't tell you, since I have gotten this thing, I hardly turn on my stove anymore which I love because it is summertime, or just about summertime. It feels like it already here in Central Valley of California. It's already like 96 degrees today, and I'm going back to work tomorrow. I'm an emergency dispatcher. I work 10-hour shifts, so my goal for today before I go back to work is to get three meals prepped, cooked, and ready for my family so that I don't have to work on my work, or cook on my work day since I work 10-hour shifts. So tonight's menu is gonna be these sliders, and then stay tuned if you want, I'm gonna make another demo after we do this one, and I'm gonna make some smothered pork chops in our stack cooker, and I'm also going to make a lasagna in this bad boy. So stick around, we're gonna make some good food today. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna take my pro ring out of my little grill here. If you haven't heard me do any other demos, I haven't done it yet, but I plan to. You can make a cake in here. Um, there's this ring that you can purchase separately. It's only about 20 bucks, and you can make a cake or breads in your microwave in the Tupperware Pro Grill. So, all right, let's get this bacon started. So I'm going to just, you can use any bacon um, that you want from the store. Um, you can use thick cut, you can use just regular bacon. You could probably use pancetta. If you have pancetta in your fridge instead of bacon and you wanted to use that, you could probably use some Canadian bacon if you crisped it up. Canadian bacon's really ham, um, but you just crisp it up. Today, I am gonna use this. Um, it is a naturally applewood smoked bacon and it's peppered on the outside. And I'm gonna take four of these. Oh, I can already do the work for me. I was just about to cut it into smaller pieces but it came out in smaller pieces. So you know what, I've got to crumble it up after I get it cooked anyway. So I'm just gonna cut it there. So now I've got some pieces about yay big. It fell apart on me so I just turned it into three pieces. Hey, cooking, make it your own. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna lay the pieces down separately in my Tupperware Pro Grill. This thing is fantastic, guys. Since I got this thing and I learned that you can cook bacon in it, I literally have not cooked bacon on the stove since. It's like, why? Why would you? When you can put it in here, it's got this little ridge around the side that drains off the grease into the edges so it's not sitting there cooking in its grease. I'm going to fill this bad boy up pretty full because these are thick slices. So what I'm getting in here is four slices of thick applewood smoked bacon. Like I said, you can use whatever bacon you want. Regular bacon from the refrigerator section at your store, or if you have a really great um, butcher in your town and you wanna use that um, from a butcher, I mean, hey, the better the bacon, the, can't go wrong with bacon. 
Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is there's these little arrows on the top of your micro pro grow. You set it on one direction, that is the casserole setting. And you'll know because it'll have sides to allow air to come through. If you turn it the other direction, that is the grill direction. You'll notice it's set right in. So I'm gonna get this in the microwave on four minutes and we're gonna check it, probably flip it and put it back in for another minute and a half or two minutes. While I do that, I'm just gonna get my chicken out and start prepping my, prepping my stack cooker. But I won't make you watch until I get the stack cooker over here and ready. One second, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I have my microwave going for four minutes. I just took out my pork chops for my next recipe, but don't worry, I'll make a whole separate video for that one. Uh, but I just want that to start coming to room temperature. So anyway, the next thing it says to do on here, and like I said, if you don't have the micro pro grill, don't worry, just cook your bacon on the stove, take it out of the grease, drain it on a paper towel, and then crumble it up, set it aside for later, because we're not gonna need that part till later. So the recipe says, Season your chicken breasts with salt and pepper and place them in the shielded colander of the Smart Multi Cooker. So I don't have a Smart Multi Cooker, but I do have a Stack Wave Cooker, and I love it. And it works kind of the same way. So the Stack Cooker, when you purchase it, sorry, I've got it kind of stacked with my extra pieces of things right now that I'm not using at the moment. So it comes with a three quart colander, a one and a half quart colander, I'm sorry, three quart casserole, one and a half quart casserole, one and a half quart colander, you know, because it has holes in the bottom, which is what we're gonna use in a minute. It comes with a lid, but it can also be inverted to use as an extra layer when you cook, or if you're baking a cake, it can be used to cook and give your cake the extra height that it needs for the air to circulate around it in the microwave. Today, we're gonna use the one and a half quart casserole, and the one and a half quart um, colander. Because we are gonna cook our chicken in here and we want all of the fat and uh, anything that we don't want in our chicken to drip off. Now it's still gonna retain moistness in the microwave because what we are gonna do is start it with a little bit of water in the bottom. You don't need much, uh, but we're gonna put, I, I have a cup here, but I'm not gonna use the whole cup. I'm just gonna put probably about a half a cup in the water. We want to create some steam in the microwave. This is going to go in for about 15 minutes. So that's all we need for the water. No more water is needed, just about a half a cup. So the next thing I'm going to do, let me move this over here to the side for a second so I can get my chicken open. I'm going to open up my chicken and we're going to get this seasoned up. Um, if you are cooking with chicken, you probably want to use a, um, silicone cutting board, which is easy. You can put it right in the sink after you use it. You do not want to reuse the same cutting board unless you wash it first and then use it. Um, also, I cut open this package with my scissors, so I will not be reusing the scissors for anything else until they're washed. You do not want to cross-contaminate your stuff and get salmonella. Salmonella. So, I'm gonna set my chicken breast right here. I'm gonna pause it for just a second. I wanna wash my hands before I touch anything else and I'm gonna put these scissors in the sink. Be right back. All right, while I was washing my hands, the microwave beeped. So I'm gonna just move my stack cooker out of the way for a second. I'm gonna grab some pot holders. Now the Pro Grill does have stay cool side handles, but I'm all about safety first with this one because it does have a metal around the edges which does heat up if you accidentally touch that it is hot and you don't want to burn yourself all right let's take a look at our bacon i love bacon and this bacon smells incredible i mean what bacon really doesn't smell incredible though right right okay so okay so i'm gonna pull this over so you can see this is steaming hot we're rendering out some of that fat there but we need to give it a flip and get it back in there for a couple minutes now this is going to be hot so you do not want to set this down directly onto your counter. So I'm going to just set it over here on my stove, right on top of the burner for a second, while I grab some tongs and just give this bacon a flip because we want it to get crispy. I probably could drain out some of the fat right now at this point, but you really don't need to. We're going to put that lid right back on. Our grease is not going to splatter in the microwave, which is also awesome about not cooking it on the stove because that's like the worst part of cooking bacon is the cleanup. 
afterwards you have bacon splattered all over the place or while you're cooking it you're standing over it trying to stir you know to flip it over and grease is popping everywhere you're burning your arms burning your face you know getting splatters all over your glasses if you have glasses like I do it's just an awful experience and nobody likes that so all right so I'm just gonna spread that back out into an even layer I'm gonna go ahead and get my grill back on in the grill setting so again it's gonna drop right down on top just like so I'm gonna put it back in here about two minutes Now, I could, if I wanted to, after I pull that bacon out of the pro grill cooker and get it onto just probably a paper towel just to get any extra grease off, I could cook my chicken breast in my pro grill cooker um, and it wouldn't take that long either, but I'm trying to show you different products that you can use here. But same premise, you could just season up the chicken and put it right into your uh, micro pro grill get the grill back on and it's still hot too so once you get it out of there if you put this chicken in there it's going to start cooking right away okay now my chicken breasts that i got are pretty thick if you didn't know tupperware also sells awesome knives this is a pro chef series knife and i want to cut my chicken breasts like i said they're they're a pretty good size so first i'm going to cut them in half and then i'm going to cut them in half again because these are really thick chicken breasts and I'm impatient and I want it to cook faster. You really don't have to cut it, but I want it to cook faster. I've got three dinners that I'm cooking today and I want, you know, this little end doesn't need to be cut in half. It's already pretty thin. So do the same thing with my other chicken breast. Just gonna cut it in half. The littler end is not that thick, but the fatter end is pretty thick. And I want this to cook quickly so that because we're going to shred it up. So I need to get it cooked, I need to get it cooled, and then I need to get it shredded up so I can continue on with my recipe. And I actually might just go ahead and cut this like just half half down, These, the bottom half, even though it's not too thick, it's, it's wide. And the smaller pieces you create, the um, quicker it's going to cook. And that's my goal for today. Like I said, it's my last day off before I go back to work, and I want to make sure that I get all these dinners done for my family. So I touch chicken again, and I'm gonna just put this in the sink, wash my hands. We're gonna check our bacon. I'm gonna stop swinging this around like I'm a ninja. Don't do that in your own kitchen, guys. Safety first. Okay, so washed my hands, and let's check on our bacon again. See if we need to go a little longer or not. Gosh, that bacon smells incredible. I love bacon. Who doesn't love bacon though, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take a look here. You can see it's getting there, but it's not quite here there. I see some crispness on some of the pieces, but not quite to where I want it. This was pretty thick bacon, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it just for another, uh, probably minute and a half. If you're using regular thin cut bacon from the store, it probably would just take the um, total of six minutes and be done pretty quickly. All right, while that's happening, I'm gonna get some salt and pepper, and I know it does not call for it, but you guys know me. I love my garlic lover seasoning and I try to use very little salt and this brand of seasoning, their seasonings really pack a punch without adding all of that salt into your food. And the bacon's already going to be salty. So I want to put very little salt on what I'm making. So now we're going to put pepper and remember, this is going to go into our stack cooker and go into the microwave and it's going to steam. So we want to season heavily here with our pepper and our garlic seasoning. And I'm just going to put a very small amount of salt, you guys, not much at all, just literally a pinch for the entire pieces here. Now, I'm going to get some different tongs. I know I'm, you're like, why do you have to keep getting so many tongs for this chicken? But you know what? I don't want to cross contaminate my um, cooking utensils. I don't want to get that salmon, you know, chicken curry salmonella. I don't want to get it all over my stuff. So I would rather use one set of tongs at a time, wash them, reuse them, whichever, then, you know, set them aside and then keep using them and then end up getting some kind of 
food poisoning, that would be the absolute worst. So you also want to always think about food safety when you're cooking at home. I know we're, I'm not a restaurant chef by any means, I'm just your average home cook, um, but I do watch a lot of Food Network. That does not make me a pro of anything by any means. Let's check on this bacon again here. See where we're at. Oh, it smells good. Sizzling. Oh yeah, there we are. So, like I said, this is still hot. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on in the grill position. Shell just set it over here on my counter. Uh, that grill is still heated up, so it's gonna do some what they call carryover cooking. So I'm just gonna let that keep setting on it, get some little extra cooking uh, time on it. It doesn't really need it, it's pretty crispy now. And then as soon as I get this part in the microwave, then I'll get it out and get it onto a paper towel and just let it cool and drain off any excess grease. Now, my grandmother, would not want me throwing out that grease. She would want me to save it in an old can or an old coffee can uh, to continue to cook with. That's what they did back in the day. You know, they didn't really waste anything. It was, you know, nose to tail cooking is what they called it. And um, they butchered their own beef and chickens and all of that stuff. Today we're like, I don't want to do that, no way. But back in the day, you know, that's what they did. Um, they raised their own you know, animals, their own fruits, their own vegetables, and they did all of that themselves. So they would always save their grease that they cooked with so they could use it the next time around. We're probably not gonna do that. I try to be pretty healthy now in my older years. Let's see, you know, I'll just use a, a fork since I've used up some of my tongs here. Oh, I see one right so They're in the dish rack. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my stack cooker. We've got row number, the one half quart casserole on the bottom and the one half quart colander on top. We have a little bit of water in the bottom because we're gonna do some steam cooking here. So we're gonna place our chicken breast in the stack cooker. We want to put the thickest part, and you don't have to put any cooking spray either, which is awesome because this material that they use, sorry, squirrel moment, it's non-porous. So it's not gonna absorb any of this chicken, but it's also gonna be non-stick for you. It's made out of the same material that fighter jets glass is made out of so um i mean you could probably stand on this thing or well, maybe a skinnier person could probably stand on this thing i'm not <laughs> not super thin but um it's very very durable so if you drop it it's not going to crack it's not going to break on you um and it's no stick so anyway back to what i was saying earlier you don't have to um add any extra grease to this so there's no reason for us to save that bacon grease. Most of the time I try to cook nowadays with cooking um, coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of olive oil spray, something like that. So as you can see here now, I've got our seasoned chicken breast in the stack cooker. The thicker parts around the outside and the thinner pieces in the middle. So now I'm just going to put our stack cooker lid on and I'm going to get this in the microwave. Um, it says for 15 minutes, but since I made these pieces pretty small, I'm going to start with 10 minutes and then we're gonna check it and see. And you might have to do the same thing on your microwave. All right, I'm gonna pause it while that happens. Uh, let me just get it in here and get it going, and then I'll pause it. I love this thing. It's also got steak hole handles too, so from this point forward, I really don't need pot holders. All right, so I've got that in for 10 minutes. I'm gonna clean this up, do some dishes, and prep for the next set of ingredients. Again, if you're following me along and you don't have, or you're trying to write down the recipe, we start out with two boneless, skinless chicken breast, four pieces of bacon, a little bit of water, salt and pepper. I added garlic seasoning. We're gonna need eight ounces of cream cheese and some fresh herbs. I'm gonna use dill today, but I also think I'm gonna cut up a little bit of celery because that's what I have in my, um, my refrigerator and I need to use that up. So anyway, I'll be right back and then we'll start prepping those for the next part of this demo. All right, I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, I've gotten all cleaned up. I'm back here. I'm going to go ahead and get my bacon pieces onto a plate with a little bit of paper towel, just so we can go ahead and drain off any extra grease that we don't want getting in our food. Try to spread it out evenly there so that the paper towel can get all of that 
that drain up. Now, like I was saying, if you want to save the grease, you are more than welcome to do that. Just let it cool, then put it into an airtight container. You can reuse it to cook any, just about anything in. And um, the great thing about bacon is that it just adds more flavor to your food. So there's nothing wrong if you want to save this bacon grease, use it again for something else. I'm actually going to go ahead, I decided to save mine because I'm making smothered pork chops in an, the next demo. So um, when I get done with this one, I won't make you keep watching this one into the next one. But I'm going to go ahead and save that bacon grease since I'm going to be cooking in repetition anyway. That's the next demo. So anyway, next thing I'm going to do here, and you know what, let me just, you know, I just, the thing about California and the Central Valley is I always seem to get a stinky fly flying around in my videos and I do my very best to keep them out so I'm gonna go ahead and put just another paper towel on top of my bacon because I do not want a stinky fly getting into my food all right so the next part of our recipe after we get our chicken into the microwave um, if you have the multi cooker you could do this in the stack multi cooker same premise just put some water to the fill line in the bottom of your smart multi cooker then same premise, put the colander in, then put the, the seasoned chicken in, and then um, do it for 15 minutes with the cover on in your smart multi-cooker, um, which is also a Tupperware product. But if you don't have that, you can use the stack cooker. We're just, like I said, gonna start with 10 minutes and then we'll see where we're at. Um, your chicken, if you have a chicken thermometer, you wanna make, wanna make sure it gets to, our meat thermometer, 165 degrees. So anyway, after we get that done, then we're going to set that aside and let it cool. But in the meantime, we're going to get the rest of our ingredients into a bowl. And then later on, we'll mix the chicken and the bacon with it. So for the rest of the recipe, it calls for eight ounces of softened cream cheese. I've had that sitting on my counter here, getting nice and soft. Then it just calls for one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm going to use my garlic lover seasoning, which we already put on the chicken. So I'm not going to add a ton, but I will add some. And then just the fresh herbs. Like I said, I've got some thyme and I've got some dill. So that's what I'm gonna put in mine. And I'm also gonna add some celery. So you can see, I switched out and I got a new cutting sheet, even though I washed the other one, it's over there in the dish drain. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up my celery. I'm just gonna chop off the ends that nobody normally really wants to eat. I will eat them later when I'm not on camera. I love vegetables. So um, if you don't, if you don't, not everybody knows how to cook and that's okay. Everything's a learning process. What I'm going to do is split my celery stalks right down the middle because I want to have smaller pieces. I don't want to be biting into a giant chunk of celery. So what you're going to do then, and if you want smaller pieces to work with, if you're new to cutting up things, just go ahead and cut them in half. That's okay. And then we'll do the other half in a minute. So I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. If you're new to cutting, uh, cutting up things. So I'm just going to line it up like this. And I know Gordon Ramsay, but I'm just going to slice. What he says is that you don't want the uh, knife to move. You want your hand to move. And my cutting board doesn't really want to cooperate with me. But you're just going to move it down. You want to kind of get even pieces. You want to just cut it. I'm probably going to have to move my knife a little bit. You want to keep your fingernails tucked in, your fingers tucked in so you don't cut your fingers. We don't want any accidents in the kitchen. Oh, hey, there's our chicken. Let's slide this aside for just a second. We'll come back to it. I want to check on our chicken to see if we need to go back in longer because we need it to have time to cool. Like I was saying earlier, these are completely stay cool handles, so you do not need pot holders. I pulled that right out of the microwave. Pull the lid off away from your face. You don't want to steam facial, right? We don't want to get it burned. Oh, this chicken is looking great, actually. Okay, I believe I do have a chicken thermometer, but you know what? I don't know where my husband put it, and he barbecued for last time. So, what you can do to check chicken is also, if you don't know how to check the doneness of meat, you can go by the palms of your hands. It's pretty firm here, more squishy in the middle, and more squishy as you go out. So, you're going to want your chicken to kind of feel like this section of your hand. If you push on it, it's pretty firm, but it has some give. So that is what I'm gonna do here. I'm touching the chicken, it's hot, be careful. Give it a little poke. It's feeling pretty soft, pretty fork tender at this point. That's the other thing you can do. You can just take a, sh a fork, stick it into the, your fattest one that you have in there. If it shreds apart evenly, it's done. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see 
actually I'll probably just pick it up. You can see here, the fattest one I have in there is totally cooked. There's no uh, pink, all the juices are running clear. You can see those juices are dripping off right onto my cutting board, that's okay, because it's totally cooked. So now all I'm gonna do is just set this aside, with the lid on it over here on my stove to cool while I do the rest of my veggies. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to turn it sideways like this. It's going to create a ridge here that's open for the steam to vent out so it gets um, cools down a little bit faster. Let me just wipe off my chicken drippings. You guys, it smells super great already. I wish that uh, we had smell o vision So now I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give a rough chop here. Nothing fancy, nothing perfect. We're not going on a TV show, right? Right. I'm gonna put it right into my that's a bowl. Uh, this is a medium that's a bowl. Just gonna slide this right in here. Do not cut yourselves if you're watching what I just did. Um, you could pick up your your cutting mat and slide it off like that. It's probably a little bit safer. Uh, like I said, I've been cooking for quite a few years, so I'm pretty confident in the kitchen. Not that I never cut myself. If you do cut yourself, please do not continue to use the food that you've been cutting. You will contaminate your other food if you continue to use it and make sure you wash your knife and your cutting board and put a band-aid on and um, make sure that that bleeding is stopped and not continuing to get in your food nobody wants to eat that like i said just try to keep your fingers tucked in and you'll avoid getting cut so i'll do it the proper way this time so i just have my cutting mat and i'm sliding it right off into my bowl so I don't get cut. All right, so let's see, what do our herbs say? One teaspoon of fresh herbs. So I made probably a, a, a little bit more than what the recipe called for, even though it says two boneless, skinless chicken breasts. These ones are pretty thick. So with my thyme, I'm just pulling off a good bunch, or I'm sorry, this is the dill, pulling off a bunch of that. I'm gonna get these in my fridge smarts after so that I, um, oh, hello green bug from Bugs Life. Don't eat it, my dog's eating it. Oh well, too late now. Um, that was, what was this little green horn beetle thing in, in Bugs Life, do you guys remember the green bug? And it looked like it had a horn, and I have one of those in my house right now. I don't think I've ever seen one of those in purpose, or in person. Anyway, I'm just giving my herbs here a kind of a rough, rough chop on the thyme calls for about a tablespoon, but I'm doing a little extra because I have a good amount of chicken. I'm going to slide that. Gosh, that smells amazing. You know, fresh herbs smell super great. If you don't have fresh herbs, you can use dry herbs. Just remember that dry herbs have a more concentrated flavor, so you're probably not going to want to put a whole teaspoon uh, into your uh, recipe. You might, you're going to want to lessen that amount probably by by half. Dried herbs are stronger. Okay, so I'm using some thyme and I'm just going to pull the little leaves right off. Um, so if you missed how I did that, I just grabbed one of the stems, like so, grabbed it from there, slid it from the back, and then just pulled the little leaves right off so that you're left with an empty stem because nobody wants to eat those rough stems. It comes off pretty easily. Like I said, I'm going to do it again here. You just hold that in and slide the leaves right off pretty easily. I'm still gonna give these a rough chop once I have them off of the stem. Fresh herbs just smell so, so amazing. My husband is growing me some um, basil in our garden that we're doing and I can't wait to use it. This is our first year that we've had um, a garden. I did not inherit the green thumb from my parents. Both of them can grow anything. I mean, they could just go like, I'll throw some seeds out there and they'll grow. Not me. I did not inherit that gene. I cannot grow anything, but my husband and my dad have been working this year together. All right, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just give this little bit here a good little rough chop. And that looks pretty good there. All right. I wish you guys could smell these fresh herbs. They just smell amazing. But like I said, if you don't have the fresh herbs, don't worry about it. Just use some um, some dried ones. It'll be totally fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get this bacon 
cut up here. I'm just gonna, I'm creating my little, I wish I was like thought about being Rachel Ray today and set up myself another that's a bowl um, as my trash bowl. So I could just put all the trash in it and dump it later. Save yourself some time in the kitchen when you're, when you're working in the kitchen. Um, I know it seems tedious, but if you have everything set up, then it just goes so much more smoothly. I know I have a lot of friends and they're like, I just don't like to cook. It's just so much work. And I mean, it can be, but if you take the time to set up your, um, your prep work, it'll save you time in the kitchen. And I have found that, um, cooking is almost therapeutic for me. Let me throw this away real quick. I'm going to pause it. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, I'm back. So yeah, as I was saying, cooking is just almost therapeutic for me anymore. I really, really do enjoy it. It reminds me of times when I was little standing at this very counter with my great grandmother and her showing me how to make biscuits and, you know, um, just making those memories that last a lifetime. And I am so grateful to my granny Gert for giving me a foundation and a love for cooking. I was such a terrible picky eater when I was little though. She'd always ask me like, what do you want to eat, hon? She has that Arkansas accent. I'd be like, smashed potatoes, because I didn't know how to say mashed potatoes. And that's all I ever wanted to eat, mashed potatoes, her gravy, biscuits, and she would always have some kind of cake, like beautifully frosted too, always. Um, and she would make the most gorgeous looking coconut cake. And if any of my relatives see this and have my great grandma Gerstle's coconut cake recipe, oh, I would really love to have it. So please reach out to me and get that to me. I would love it. All right. Now we're gonna get our chicken. I guess so. Yeah, that's fine. My son making his guest appearance in the background there. So if you have a chef prep, I'm gonna take some help from my chef prep to shred this chicken. I want you guys to see, I'm going to get rid of this cutting board and grab another one really quick. That one's got my bacon grease on it. I don't want to go sliding all over the place. So what I'm going to do, I've got my chopper blade into my chef prep. Going to take some help here, guys. Sometimes you need a little help in the kitchen, right? Right. And this is my first time doing this, but I've heard you can shred chicken in this bad boy. So I'm just kind of cutting it into some pieces here. My dogs are like, please drop something, mom. Please drop something. Do you guys have fur babies? I love my fur babies. They are beyond spoiled though. My dogs, I'm telling you what, they're like little people and they're always right under my feet when I'm cooking, just praying and hoping that I am going to drop anything. Carrots, veggies, they love all of that stuff. All right, so let me just give this a pull. So I've got this little, um, rubber piece on the bottom is going to give me some stability and I'm just going to give this a few pulls in the blade setting on my chef cup. Um, it's getting a little rough to do so I'm going to just give it a little shake. Wow that is amazing you guys that shredded up. Let me see I know it's kind of steamy because it's still hot. Check that out. Look how fast that shredded up. All right so I'm going to dump that in. That is incredible. You guys, I would have had to sit here with a fork forever doing all of this. Look at how well that shredded up. Isn't that awesome? All right, I'm going to get this rest of this shredded up and into the bowl, and I'll be right back with you. I always think of stuff while I have this thing paused. So I'm still shredding up the chicken. I've got it almost done. But look at how all of that chicken fat dripped off, right? That's not getting in our food. It's making this recipe so much more healthier. It's unbelievable. I'm so impressed by the stack cooker. I cannot tell you guys how life-changing it. I've only had this thing for about... Uh, a week and a half, I literally have not turned on my stove, except to maybe just saute up some onions really quick or something like that. But now that I have this Microwave Pro Grill, I don't have to do that. All right, I'm going to finish getting this chicken shredded. I'm going to be right back with you. All right, guys, I'm just putting my last couple of pulls to this chicken here. It literally only took me, a, like, I don't even know, probably not even, I've got one little bigger piece there. Let me just get that back in there for just a couple of seconds. Um... My dogs are probably like, just hand that here. They don't want to watch you shred up one little piece of chicken. You're probably right, guys. But i got to show them how quick this is. I mean, I can't help it, babies. Do you guys talk to your animals at all? I do. Anyway, I can't tell you how awesome having the chef prep is. Look at, I shredded up all of that chicken in like, I don't even know, literal minutes. It took me literal minutes. And I have like hand shredded. I can't tell you 
how many meats in my life. All right, so the next part of this recipe is eight ounces of cream cheese. As you guys can see, I opened it up and I just cut it into about 10 pieces just to help it along here, getting that right there into my bowl. And it says to just mix it together. Um, it says that you can add um, the garlic seasoning. I don't know that it needs more seasoning though because I pre-seasoned that chicken when I cut it up and um, the chicken tastes pretty darn good. I, I cheated and I gave it a little bit of taste while I was shredding up the chicken. Um, and it, it has a really good flavor. There's enough salt in that chicken. I don't need to add any more to it. So basically now you guys, we're just folding in all of those ingredients together. And if you watched any of my other videos, when you're folding in anything, whether it's a cake, whether it's ground beef, whatever kind of meat you're working with, you don't wanna work with it too much. The more you work with it, the tougher it's gonna get. And um, you don't wanna eat tough meat. My family doesn't wanna eat tough meat. Nobody wants tough meat. So you just wanna work it until the ingredients are incorporated. Now this is a perfect make ahead meal. You could make this, put it in your refrigerator. When you come home from work, it's gonna be done. It's gonna be ready. Your family is gonna be like, what's for dinner? And you're like, oh, let me just pull this out. Here, this, this is for dinner. But it literally took me, this video is going now for 36 minutes. Sorry guys, if you're watching, it's taking forever and you're like, get to the end. Um, it takes a little longer when you're making a video. But when you're not, I probably could have had this done and ready and on the table in less than 20, 25 minutes by the time I cooked the bacon to the stack cooking the chicken, never turned on my stove. This is done. I'm gonna serve it with some lettuce and topped up tomatoes and some purple onions sliced up right on these hamburger buns. And your meal is done. If you wanna add a side, you can, you know, fries, whatever you wanna go with it. But this is a perfect, quick, easy dinner, relatively unhealthy. The fat drained off the chicken, it drained off the bacon, you've got the cream cheese, but you can use low fat cream cheese if you want. I didn't, but you can if you wanna make it more locale. Try this recipe, it's awesome. Megan, thank you for sending to me. I actually do just wanna take one last little bitty taste just to make sure we have plenty of salt, because like we, like I said, there's salt on that bacon. Mm. You guys, gotta try this. That is incredible. It does not need another thing. I'm gonna put the lid on my that's a bowl and this one's ready. All right guys, I'm gonna get prepped and set up for my next one. Don't worry, this video is gonna end and there'll be another video. You don't have to keep watching this one. All right guys, come back and cook with me again. Again, Michelle Wood Levis. I have a Facebook VIP page. You can shop right on my site, private message me, ask me about any of these recipes and I'll post the link to my site. You guys have a blessed day and I hope you enjoyed this recipe.